Picking back up in Chapter 13, we're now ready to look at our spinal nerves. We have just finished discussing the 12 pair of cranial nerves that extend out of the brain. Now we're going to look at the 31 pairs of nerves that extend out of the spinal cord. All nerves that extend out of the spinal cord are mixed nerves. They're going to have a sensory and a motor portion. There are eight cervical nerves extending from cervical vertebrae 1 to cervical vertebrae number 8. There are 12 thoracic nerves from thoracic vertebrae number 1 to thoracic vertebrae number 12. There are 5 lumbar nerves from lumbar vertebrae number 1 to number 5. And then there are 5 sacral nerves and 1 nerve coming out of the coccyx. Each of the spinal nerves extends out of what we've already talked about as the ventral root and the dorsal root of the spinal cord. If you recall, all motor fibers from your muscles m move into the spinal cord through the ventral root of nerves. All sensory nerves come into the spinal cord through the dorsal root. Where the dorsal root and ventral root combine, that is the spinal nerve. So if we look at this picture here, this is our spinal cord. We all recognize this, gray matter, white matter, the different parts of it. On the back or dorsal side of the spinal cord, we have the dorsal root. The dorsal root, remember, is the one that has the ganglia, the big collection of cell bodies. On this side, we have the ventral root. You notice the ventral root and the dorsal root combined together here. Now this is called the spinal nerve. This is where the spinal nerve would actually exit out of the vertebrae itself. The spinal nerve, once it leaves the vertebrae, branches again into different rami. One would be a dorsal ramus going this direction or a ventral ramus coming this direction. Every time the spinal nerve leaves the vertebrae, it branches. Almost all of your ventral rami are going to be, or rami, are going to be different plexuses that we're going to look at and look at the peripheral nerves that branch off of the different plexuses. The back of the body is going to be innervated by the dorsal rami. Now what we're going to do is take a look at these different plexuses and learn the location of important nerves in our body. We're now back to something you have not seen in a while where you're going to have to sit down and memorize the location of these different structures in the body. We're going to start with the cervical plexus that is formed by the ventral rami coming from spinal nerves C1 through C4. The job of the cervical plexus is to innervate the skin and muscles of the neck, ear, back of the head, and shoulders. There is only one peripheral nerve that you are required to learn. It is a branch of the lower portion of the cervical plexus. It is called the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve is the nerve that moves down to innervate the diaphragm. Spasms in the phrenic nerve are known as hiccups. Now taking a look at the brachial plexus, the brachial plexus is formed by the ventral rami of C5 through C8 and T1, so the beginning of the thoracic spinal nerves. There are some important branches of the brachial plexus you need to identify, and we're going to look at them. It's written in words on your next few slides. You have the axillary branching here, axillary, of course, going towards the armpit, the radial, and the ulnar. The radial is going to be more on the radius side of the arm, and the ulnar more on the ulnar side of the arm. Here is a list of the important nerves of the brachial plexus and their job. You do need to learn these. The axillary nerve innervates the deltoid teres minor 
and skin and joint of your shoulder. The musculocutaneous nerve innervates your biceps brachii and your brachialis. So that is going to be the nerve responsible for sending the input to your arm that you need to flex your elbow or your forearm. The median nerve innervates your skin and most of the flexors and pronators of your forearm. The median nerve is the nerve responsible for initiating the flexion of the wrist. The ulnar nerve supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris, part of your flexor digitorum, and most of the intrinsic muscles of your hand and skin in your hand. The ulnar is going to support the flexion of the wrist, but also the flexion of the fingers. The radial nerve is going to innervate the extensors of your forearm. It is going to be mostly responsible for extending the wrist. This picture shows the location of the important nerves. Here at the top, this is the brachial plexus. The axillary nerve comes out, goes to the shoulder. That's how it can innervate the deltoid. The radial nerve comes down. You see this is on the thumb side of the arm. Radial nerve, again, is on the back side of the arm. It's a posterior nerve, so it's going to be for extension, hyperextension. On the anterior side of the arm, we have the musculocutaneous, ulnar, and median, more towards the middle. Both of these are involved with flexion of the arm and the fingers, if you're looking at the ulnar. The musculocutaneous is for flexion of the elbow. Now moving along, we'll look at the lumbar plexus. This is going to be moving out of lumbar vertebrae 1 through 4. It is going to move down the body to innervate the thigh, portions of the abdominal wall, and the psoas muscle, which is located in the pelvic cavity. Two important nerves that come out of the lumbar plexus are your femoral nerve and the obturator nerve. Your femoral nerve innervates your quadriceps and the skin on the surface of the leg. The obturator nerve passes through an important foramen to go past the quadriceps and into your adductor muscles. If we look at the picture here, this is a blown up picture of the lumbar vertebrae shown here. Okay. And we can follow. Here's the obturator nerve. You see it's going more to the inner portion of the leg, innervating the adductors to help you adduct your leg. And here is the femoral nerve going down into the quadriceps. The femoral nerve actually branches several times, but we're not going to learn the name of every single one of those branches. Now moving to the sacral plexus. This is a blown up picture of your sacral plexus coming out of the sacrum. The sacral plexus originates from lumbar vertebrae number four all the way down to fused sacral vertebrae number four. The sacral plexus is going to innervate the buttock, the lower limbs, pelvic structures, and the perineum. The largest and most important branch of your sacral plexus is the sciatic nerve. This is the longest and thickest nerve in your body. It innervates your hamstrings to help you with flexion of the knee, some of your adductor muscles, and then going down to innervate almost all of the muscles in the lower leg and the foot. Showing you a picture, here's your portions of your sacral plexus, and here's that really big sciatic nerve extending down. It does branch once it hits the knee. Again, we're not learning the name of every nerve. 